America in which government justice and accountability for abuses is utterly beyond reach. Why are you silent about the human rights abuses in your own country? Because it is not my duty or my responsibility or does not fall within my mandate, particularly as prosecutor of the ICC, to pronounce or to advise whether favorably or not any government, including my government, on political issues. And, and not to say where you see clear abuses of human it is, rights? It is, I have not done it for any other country. I will also not do it for my... You didn't mind wagging your finger at the uh, Security Council and reminding them the of Security their Council, inaction. The Security we have a relationship in which they referred a situation to us. You didn't mind speaking and out over Burundi or Central African Republic? Because when I speak out, and I want this to be very clear, anywhere that I speak out and make a declaratory statement, I am urging people not to commit crimes that fall within the jurisdiction of the ICC. This is my responsibility. And, I and am the not report, the of a human rights. And, and I'm a prosecutor. Yeah, and the and, Human Rights and Watch crimes, reported that crimes in Gambia included by state security forces and militias, arbitrary arrest and detention, torture, enforced disappearance, and unlawful killing. Something which might fall within your remit, reasonably be expected to fall within your remit. What would be so wrong in you warning them against doing that? Um, because, what would as be so I wrong? said, what, what's I the do worst not, that could happen to you, Madam As a prosecutor, it is not about myself. It is about my legal mandate. But you have huge independence. You're a prosecutor. Of I do. You can point the finger. But it's you who are deciding not to say anything Tim, about this. I am crime. not going to make pronouncement on political issues that are happening in countries. This is not political. Not, this I, is abuse. This is violations yes, of you. This is killing is and it, torture. Is it crimes that fall within my jurisdiction? That is the question. These are crimes. This is, this are, but they have to fall within my jurisdiction. It should not be so difficult to understand that I'm a prosecutor. And under the Rome Statute, my crimes are war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity. And you, you and, and those the same. crimes, and those crimes, even where they occur, must satisfy the gravity threshold to warrant the intervention of the ICC. And you're famous ICC, for saying, and you're famous I, for saying, Madam Prosecutor, I like to see that the victims know that they have a voice, yes. but not in the Gambia. No, not, uh, not I, in I the think Gambia. This is they unfair don't. to say. It is unfair to say because, as I told you, I go after crimes that fall within my jurisdiction. Not any crimes. Not all sorts of crimes. They have to be crimes that are within the jurisdiction of the ICC. And murder and torture doesn't fall be, within your, your remit. When we look at situations, when we decide to look into any situations where we feel that our crimes have been committed, there are several issues that we look at, including gravity, warranting the intervention of the ICC. I must not raise expectations so much that I am not able to to satisfy that. It's it's not possible. Madam Prosecutor, committed. the helpless, the dispossessed, the abused die when people like you remain silent, don't they? You know this to be true. You, all around the world, people are dying because important people are staying silent. Tim, how can you Tim, stay silent I when still, you know that human rights abuses are being committed I have, and you have the chance to speak out? Because what's the worst that can happen to you my court is out? not My court is not a court of human rights. I must also remain independent. I must remain impartial. What do you want and to be what, known for? What, I, what do you want to be known for? Staying silent? I'm not talking out. I have been talking out where I can talk out. Where I cannot, I will not. And I will not be dragged into um, saying something which can jeopardize my independence in the future or my impartiality. That is why when these crimes have happen in a place where I do not have jurisdiction, I will not pronounce anything. I will not. Because it is not my jurisdiction. I do not have the legal mandate to do so. This is why I will remain silent. But where I have jurisdiction, and I say this without fear or favor, where I have jurisdiction and my legal, the legal requirements are met for me to intervene, I will not hesitate. I will not hesitate to intervene where the legal requirements within the Rome Statute that guides my action, where they are met, I will not hesitate. Fatou Ben Souda, thanks very much for being on Public Zone. Thank you very much for having me. in The Hague.
the headquarters of the International Criminal Court. This week, Conflict Zone is in The Hague, the headquarters of the International Criminal Court, the ICC, and my guest is Fatou Bensouda, the chief prosecutor. Despite her Gambian nationality, she's lost the support of many African nations who had first welcomed the court and have now decided that it's biased against them. Is she part of the solution or the problem? Ben Suda, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. Thank 13 you years me. of your court's operation, $1 billion so far spent, two convictions. How can anybody say that this is worth the money? Indeed, I would say it is worth the money. It is um, about the rule of law. It is about... In two cases. Uh, it is about ensuring that there is accountability. And it is not really about the number of convictions. Um, it is important, of course, for uh, to have convictions. But what is more important is the impact that the court has had so far in its infancy. Okay, in its well, but I want to talk to you about the impact it's had because it stopped none of the global war crimes, which the number of which seem to be going up and up. We've had Israel, Palestine, Sudan, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Egypt, Ukraine. No deterrent effect whatsoever visible from your court. Um, I beg to differ. I, I think that we should not be judging the court and its performance because um, atrocities. What else can we judge it on? Because atrocities are, are still uh, being uh, the, the court's performance because the atrocities continue to be committed. If you take, uh, for example, at the national level, the, the, the criminal justice system has been existing for several years, but it hasn't stopped people from committing crimes. So this should not be the uh, measure in which the ICC is judged. It should be looked at for the preventive impact that it has had, and I believe it has had this, uh, because the court is not only for uh, investigating and prosecuting war crimes, but it also should have this preventive uh, impact. I understand, but we just listed the number of countries where it hasn't prevented anything from happening. And if we just take Egypt, for instance, yeah. August 2013, we had perhaps the largest single-day massacre of demonstrators in a single day in recent history, according to Human Rights Watch, according to other human rights groups. Your court, and I gather you gave a, a number of procedural reasons why your court couldn't get it involved in this, but your court had nothing to say about this, nothing to say whatsoever about one of the most serious crimes to take place on your watch. Why is that? We have, uh, Tim, to remember that the court operates based on um, jurisdiction, the jurisdiction that we have. And we have to follow strictly this legal mandate according to the Rome Statute. Then the statute where, is no where, longer fit for purpose, is it? If it can't prevent the largest single-day massacre in recent history or have anything to say about it afterwards or follow up with any investigation, then it's not fit for purpose, is it? I, I do believe it is still fit, fit for purpose for those who have signed and ratified the Rome Statute and are members of the International Criminal Court. This is what we should remember, that the ICC cannot operate in situation where we do not have jurisdiction. What would have prevented you, Madam Prosecutor, of saying, for instance, we have reason to believe there has been killing on a massive scale and we are watching this in case it falls within our jurisdiction later on or the Security Council refers it to us. You could have said that. You could have said something yeah. to show that you're watching, you're aware, because you're the court of last resort I, in this world today. I do not think that it is my um, mandate or falls within my mandate or it's my responsibility to make pronouncements in every, all and every situations where these atrocity crimes have been committed. But this isn't all when and every. This is the, one of the most serious I, in modern I believe times. it's very serious and, and I know silent. that I, I know it's very serious uh, and I do know that again, innocent people have suffered, victims, I am aware of that and I would decry any time that these kind of crimes have been committed. But as a prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, I have to know where I can uh, speak out, 
or where I cannot. Where I do not have jurisdiction, I do not think it is proper for me to make pronouncement regarding that. It's more wonder then that, that people are losing faith in this court. And they are losing faith in this court, aren't they? You said that over Sudan and Darfur, you actually told the Security Council that countless victims have been demoralized, didn't you? You said, after all, who can blame them when attaining justice appears so remote? Not the least because of the absence of adequate follow-up and support from the Security Council. You went to the Security Council, you pointed I went a finger at them, and you said you're letting down the victims. But you're letting them down in all these other countries as well. You? Where we have jurisdiction. In Sudan, we were given jurisdiction. Or we were, the situation, and you the situation was referred, if you may allow me to, mm -hmm. to just respond. The situation... In uh, the in Darfur, as you know, was referred to the UN to the ICC by the UN Security Council, and this gave gave us the mandate to be able to intervene in that situation and exercise that mandate. But you failed. But nonetheless, I do not believe that we have failed. I do not believe what I have been emphasizing to the UN Security Council is that since they referred this situation to us to the ICC. They also have a responsibility to support us in the investigations and prosecutions that we are undertaking in, in Darfur. And when I refer to the victims, I'm referring to the victims of the crimes that were committed in the Sudan. You say Darfur. this isn't a failure, but you, you actually told the Security Council year after year, victims' hopes and aspirations for justice and a durable peace have been dashed. These are your words. This is true. This is true. And I this said is, them. And this is a failure on a grand scale, isn't I, it? I believe, uh, Tim, we're taking this out of context. Um, as I said, I'm refer the situation in this Sudan, in Darfur, was referred to the ICC by the UN Security Council. I, I understand this, but you're part and of they a have a that has failed. They have people. a responsibility, yes. the UN Security Council, mm -hmm. to support the ICC, to support the Office of the Prosecutor in the investigations of this case. And they are not doing that. I therefore will have to keep on reminding them that that responsibility, that duty is theirs. What we are supposed to do... But my point do, is, you're part of this system. What we are supposed you're to part do... Of this system. I don't disagree with that. What we are supposed to do, as an office of the prosecutor, is to investigate these crimes. This is our responsibility. When the referral was made to us, we investigated these crimes under very difficult circumstances. As you know, the Sudan has not agreed to cooperate with the ICC, and we had to investigate without going to Sudan. I understand and, this. I and, understand this. And that was our responsibility. But the result... Our the responsibility result. is to investigate. But the result is, as you put it, the frustration and resignation of the victims yeah. in the face of inaction yes. must weigh heavily on our collective conscience. And my question to you is, does it weigh on your conscience too? I think I've said that I've been loud and clear in saying that. It does, because this is a system. The court cannot work alone. The court needs cooperation. The ICC needs support from its member states. This is how it was set up to work. So I say the system is no longer fit for purpose. You went before the Security Council, Madam Prosecutor. You accused them of empty promises. You accused them of inaction in the face of indiscriminate killings. And they didn't even blush. They simply thanked you for coming. That was the response that you got. Why go on with this farce? I, I, I think it is still my responsibility. That should not discourage me. The court was set up, the office was set up to do just that, to investigate and prosecute. In this particular instance, when we got a referral, and after making our own analysis that we should investigate into this situation, we have continued and have been committed to this. From the very beginning, we have continued to work on this file. We have continued to attempt to give victims a voice. I, we I have understand. Continued, and that is what we have done. I so understand. what, what I But want in Darfur, you have victims if, who have no voice. If I, if I may no just, voice. if I may just complete, what we were supposed to do, I believe, in the situation in Darfur, we have done. We have been fully committed to it, and we've been doing it from the beginning. What comfort is that to the victims? We have that you have followed procedures. We, what comfort is that to the victims? We have requested, as you know, we have requested for several arrest warrants. I know, but I'm looking at results. In this you're looking at procedures. I'm, I'm looking not, at the results. It doesn't make any difference to these poor people. You, who are